Hello, I'm Dan Loy, Extension Beef Specialist at Iowa State University and Director of the Iowa Beef Center. In the next few minutes I'd like to give you a quick overview of uh, the uh, concept of treating low quality forages with a strong alkali to improve their digestibility. Because of the limited forage availability that many of you have been dealing with due to the drought, um, one of the potential options is to look at the tremendous supply of corn stover that's available across the state. It's been estimated that as much as 200 million metric tons uh, of, of forage is available in the form of corn stover. But of course it's low in digestibility and needs to be supplemented uh, or upgraded in terms of uh, its uh, feeding, feed quality and digestibility. Now through the years there's been uh, considerable research that's been conducted looking at strong alkali or hydrolytic agents to, um, to uh, improve the digestibility of low quality forages and crop residues. Uh, many of the compounds that have been looked at are sodium, calcium, potassium, and ammonium hydroxide, but also anhydrous ammonia and urea. All of these are strong bases and they work by partially solubilizing the hemicellulose and breaking that lignocellulose bond. The net effect is uh, improving the digestibility often between 10 and 15 percent is the common uh, the common results that uh, have, have been uh, uh, found with these particular compounds over the years. One of the compounds that um, has been used extensively, especially back in the late 1970s and early 1980s, was the use of anhydrous ammonia. Uh, treating uh, hay, or tr I'm sorry, treating crop residues, usually wheat straw or corn stover with anhydrous ammonia in 21 studies that were conducted increased dry matter intake as much as 20, 22 percent and improved digestibility about 15 percent. Then of course there were effective, the, you know, the temperature, the outside temperature, water content, the length of reaction, uh, all of these uh, things tended to affect uh, the results in those particular studies. Typically what is done with uh, treating big round bales of uh, crop residues with anhydrous ammonia is to cover the material with plastic, seal it with dirt around the outside, and then trickle in anhydrous ammonia at about 3% of the dry matter uh, into that, uh, uh, in, you know, under that uh, plastic and allow that to penetrate the, the, the silage, or I'm sorry, the, the uh, mass of forage. The advantages is that, you know, grinding's not needed because anhydrous ammonia is a gas and it penetrates through the material. Usually add about 3% on a dry matter basis. There are some concerns with toxicity when high quality forages are treated and that's a bit of an issue. And of course safety is a concern anytime you're dealing with anhydrous ammonia um, just because of the nature of that material. Rick Rasby, beef specialist at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, has um, recently conducted some cost estimates of the uh, current costs of treating uh, forages with anhydrous ammonia and this is the results of, of his analysis. Um, basically the assumptions that Rick made was uh, treating anhydrous or the cost of anhydrous at about $800 a ton or 40 cents a pound and if that's treated at 3 percent of the dry matter which is 60 pounds per ton then the cost to treat anhydrous per ton of forage is about $24 per ton. Add in the cost of plastic, the labor involved with the treating process, machinery costs, etc. Um, then the total cost of ammoniation was estimated to be somewhere around $36 per ton. So if the uh, improvement in digestibility exceeds the cost of treatment, then this would be something that, that you would certainly want to consider. Many uh, questions more recently though have been looking at calcium oxide as a treatment uh, for to upgrade low quality forages. Some advantages of calcium oxide is that it may be cheaper than some of the other treatments. Calcium does replace, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, calcium oxide does replace calcium in the diet which in many uh, diet, in many rations is a, a needed nutrient and it's safer than sodium, hydro sodium hydroxide, uh, ammonia, or uh, hydrogen peroxide, which are some other options that have been researched. Um, and it may increase ruminal digestion of distiller's grains, so there may be some uh, synergism between feeding distiller's grains, modified distiller's grains, or wet distiller's grains along with calcium oxide treated forages. 
disadvantages. There's labor and quick uh, labor and equipment that is involved in the treatment process. Of course, you need a supply of high quality stover or straw, and you need to add fairly large quantities of water, which can be a, a logistical challenge. And I think what the ultimate question that you need to ask if you're considering upgrading uh, low quality forages with calcium oxide is, is it really better to feed to supplement the uh, to meet the requirements of the animals rather than uh, than upgrading the forage itself? Uh, and are there other sources that could be potentially cheaper than treating calcium oxide? So those are those are some of the basic questions. Some of the early research that was done was done at the University of Illinois, where they uh, looked at, a, at substituting a combination of treated calcium uh, forage treated with calcium oxide, corn stover, but also substituting one part distiller's grains. And in that case, that was substituted for corn. And they found with growing Holstein steers, they saw an increase in dry matter intake and improved forage digestibility. More recently, there have been several studies conducted at University of Illinois, Iowa State University, University of Nebraska-Lincoln, using either calcium oxide or calcium hydroxide. Either of those compounds can be used with the same effect. Uh, and in those studies, the total digestible nutrients or digestibility has been improved somewhere around 8 to 15 percent. And there were additional responses in studies where either wet or modified distiller's grains were incorporated, particularly feedlot studies. And so uh, one study that was conducted at Illinois, or I'm sorry, at Iowa State University, where we substituted added, uh, substituted 15 percent uh, treated cal uh, calcium or calcium oxide treated corn stover along with 20 percent distiller's grains and substituted those two for corn, uh, we uh, found a, a comparable performance between the control, um, the control treatment in that particular study. So the treatment method is, involves um, adding calcium oxide at 5% of the dry matter or 6% if calcium hydroxide is used, but we also need to add about 50% moisture to the material or to bring the material up to 50% total moisture. And, it's, and a finder grind is preferred. Less than three inches of uh, uh, particle size would be preferred if that's at all possible. After treatment, the pH should increase to 10 to 12. That's the, the uh, uh, general uh, concept of the strong alkali is to increase that pH to somewhere around 10 to 12. And you should wait around seven days before feeding. It's not a fermentation process where you need to wait three weeks or four weeks. Uh, but if you are going to store it for longer periods of time, you know, oxygen exclusion will help reduce some of the spoilage organisms that can occur if it's allowed access to air. So practically, uh, there are several different methods that have been looked at. Of course, the batch system, as you see in the upper left, where it's added to a feed wagon, is how it was conducted or how it was processed in, in many of the uh, uh, research or studies that were conducted added to a feed wagon, the water and calcium oxide added and then mixed uh, and, uh, and delivered to storage material. But also there's been uh, continuous systems that have been developed as well where, uh, where the material is, is added, both water and calcium oxide as it exits uh, a, a tub grinder for example, this happens to be a, a demonstration that was done at a meeting at the University of Nebraska at Mead on June 20, where a two grinder system was a value was uh, uh, demonstrated. The first grinder uh, pre-grinds the material, and then in the second grinder, the water and calcium oxide is added, and then the treated uh, stover exits, as you see uh, in this particular example. There also has been some work with the direct harvest in treatment, where cal where uh, uh, corn stover is windrowed behind a combine and then calcium oxide and water is added to the windrow and then that material is uh, placed into storage a bunker silo for example. So those are the systems that uh, that are currently in use or have been demonstrated or, or used uh, in uh, research and in practical application um, in uh, around the country. The economics, um, of course, will vary tremendously depending on the, 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 uh, the methods of application and so forth. But just one example here is if we assume the calcium uh, hydroxide in this example is $350 per ton or calcium oxide, that's about 15 tons per uh, original 
uh, forage, uh, $15 per ton of the original forage. If you add at least $10 per ton labor and machinery on, uh, on top of that, we're looking at somewhere around $25 per ton <clears throat> without grinding, uh, without the cost of grinding included. So that would need to be uh, evaluated as well. Uh, current custom rates on um, uh, average custom rates on grinding is somewhere around $260 an hour. So depending on the amount that you're uh, that you're uh, grinding, that can have a uh, quite a variation in the total cost for grinding. But that gives you some kind of indication in terms of what the the costs are. So just to summarize very quickly, the best response um, is when treating forage and adding wet distillers grains at the same time. And th so in the feedlot situations where you're for, where you're feeding uh, a low pH feedstuff like wet distillers grains along with the strong alkali treated forage, uh, there seems to be some synergism and some added benefits in those particular situations. Uh, the grinding and treatment requires considerable labor and equipment that needs to be considered as well. Uh, calcium oxide it seems to be the preferred, or calcium hydroxide, which uh, is apparently somewhat safer, uh, seems to be the most practical process. And for beef cows and growing cattle, which uh, is one of the areas where we get con lots of questions, um, expect somewhere around an 8 to 15 percent improvement in TDN or digestibility. Thank you very much.